What is the difference between minimal APIs and controllers in SP.NET Core? Hello, my name is Felipe Gavilan and in this course we are going to study minimal APIs. However, it is important to know when to choose controllers over minimal APIs. In general, both can do almost the same thing. Probably in 95% of the cases it doesn't really matter and it is a matter of preference to choose one over the other. However, there are certain features that controllers have that minimal APIs do not. Before we begin, if you want to learn more about minimal APIs, buy my Udemy course today, where we will build one from scratch. Alright, back to the video. We remember that minimal APIs are a new way of creating web APIs in SP.NET Core. The idea of these is that they are very fast and light compared to controllers. Minimal APIs achieve this by redesigning the way web APIs work. Also, they remove unnecessary dependencies, so that we only use what is essential. However, being a new technology, minimal APIs still cannot do everything we could do with controllers. Though, before talking about the features that are not being supported by minimal APIs, it is important to clarify that we're talking about .NET 8. It is possible that minimal APIs will add some of these features in future versions of .NET. Let's see then some of the new features that we cannot use in minimal APIs. First, no default support for validations. In SP.NET Core, we have always been used to the fact that placing a few simple attributes on the properties of a class is enough to trigger validations. With validations, we ensure that the data the client sent us is correct, or at least has the correct format. For example, if we have the following class, we see that the name field is required and that the email field must be in email format. However, in minimal APIs, this does nothing. We have to build our own validation mechanism, as we will see later in this course. Therefore, for a beginner, it is much more comfortable to learn how to work with SP.NET Core with controllers than with minimal APIs. No support for JSON patch. We know that in the web world, we can use HTTP methods such as get, post, put, and delete. However, there are others, such as patch. The idea of patch is to do a partial update on a resource. This means that, for example, if we have a person resource which has a name and date of birth properties, if I only want to update the name of the person without touching the date of birth, I can send a patch request to the web API indicating that we only want to update the name. The standard way of doing this in SP.NET Core is using a library called JSON patch which makes our lives easier when performing this operation. However, currently there is no support for this library for minimal APIs. And of course there is support for this library for controllers. This does not mean that we cannot use HTTP patch in minimal APIs, but that we have to find another mechanism to do it other than using JSON patch. No support for the iModelBinder interface. Model binding refers to the assignment of data to variables or properties of a class based on the data received in an HTTP request. That is, the idea of model binding is to allow us to work directly with the models instead of having to do it with the HTTP context. This is more convenient and makes our code more readable. In general, model binding works almost by itself. However, in advanced scenarios, it is sometimes necessary to build our own model binding logic, and the iModelBinder interface can help us with this. In minimal APIs, this interface is not supported. However, what exists in its replacement is a method called bind async, which allows us to do similar work, although not exactly the same. The main difference between bind async and iModelBinder is that iModelBinder allows us to write code that is reusable between different models. And of course, for advanced scenarios, bind async is a little bit more tedious, but in general, they have quite similar capabilities. No support for rendering views. Although it seems obvious that a web API does not usually render views, in reality, it is easy for a web API that uses controllers to be able to use views. However, in the case of minimal APIs, this is not allowed. And if you think about it, it makes sense, since minimal APIs are about having an API with a bare minimum to work, with a promise that this gives you a faster application. But if you start adding things outside of the typical responsibilities of a web API, it is no longer very minimal, right? No support for the standard OData package. OData is a technology that allows us to simplify the way we develop web APIs. Basically, it gives us the possibility for web API clients to tell us exactly what data they want, instead of depending on the endpoints we make. 
This way, there is less code that we have to write to have a flexible web API that adapts to the needs of our clients. There is an official Microsoft package for managing old data, which makes our lives easier when using this technology. Unfortunately, this package is not supported by minimal APIs. However, we have the alternative of using a technology like GraphQL in minimal APIs to achieve a similar result. There is no part or application model support. In SP.NET Core, when we talk about parts, we refer to the framework's ability to allow us to divide some of its parts into different projects. For example, we can place the controllers for an MVC application in a separate project, which would allow us to share these controllers in different applications. This concept does not exist in minimal APIs. Now, this does not mean that we cannot use different projects in minimal APIs, but that the concept of application parts does not exist in minimal APIs. Another thing that is not supported is the application model which basically refers to the different components of an MVC application. This application model is what allows us, for example, to configure the conventions that exist in an application. For example, that controller should end in controller. This convention allows the application to work fine without having to do too many configurations. These conventions also do not exist in minimal APIs. So as you can see, unless you really need some of these features, you can definitely use minimal APIs without an issue. If you want to learn more about minimal APIs, buy my Udemy course today. You can find a link with a discount in the description of this video. Thank you.